This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Hi. I want to finish off um, cash flow by mentioning a couple of other things that might come up in the exam. And the first one is about formats. When you learned your financial reporting, you learned that there were two formats for IES 7. The one that you used in the exam was the indirect method, where you took the profit, added back the non-cash items like depreciation, and then adjusted for the movements in working capital, like in increase in inventory. But you will have met briefly the direct method. The direct method, again, means that in a cash flow statement, Instead of having this rather eccentric performer that you've learned, you just talk to the shareholders and other users in ordinary language. And you say, look, this is what happened. And if you look at the words, they're very clear using the direct method. This is the money that came from the customers. This is the money that went to suppliers. This is the money went to employees and so on. Now, an obvious question for me is, could you be asked to prepare it? I suppose you could. I don't think they ever have. Um, I wouldn't have thought so. That's a bookkeeping exercise. The thing to appreciate, of course, about the direct method is that actually it, it is more tricky to prepare. And you'd have to go back to something you studied first when you did your first financial accounting exam, where I think you learned about incomplete records and restructuring um, movements in the financial statements where with all sorts of adjustments through ledger accounts, highly messy, it's the same for companies. The point is, which method is better? So what you need to know is this, it's these two points down here. IES 7 prefers the direct method. Of course it does. If you imagine one of your relatives, your uncle or auntie, who understands a bit about business but isn't an accountant, they would understand those blue words. So IES 7 says, please use the direct method. It's a preference, it's not a rule. And companies say, well, this will take me ages to sort out. I don't think it's about concealing anything. I think it's just that it's just too time consuming. So the direct method is not used by most companies. So direct method is not used by companies because of the time and expense. The scenario I see there is in an ethics question that the director will get the rule the wrong way round and the director will say, we use the indirect method because the standard prefers it. And you must say, no, that's not true and then you can book them for professional competence and due care or lack of it. That's the first point. The other point, just rounding off on cash flow, quite a separate point, is about pensions. And in particular, it's about defined benefit pension plans. Now, if you haven't met those yet in your studies, don't panic. Just make a note for later. But when you come to see those with a defined benefit pension plan, then um, there's an accounting adjustment in the PL called service cost. It's almost like depreciation. It's a non-cash item. And like other non-cash items, it gets added back. So this will become clearer if you, when you've studied pension plans. But anything called a service cost gets added back, like depreciation. And instead of that, what they actually show is the cash flow. The cash flow is the money that is contributed to the pension plan by the reporting company. So if that looks a bit alien to you, don't worry. But perhaps when you go through pensions, you'll see that jargon. You can look back at this and say, well, actually, I understand. Like many things, the number that we put in the profit and loss is not necessarily the cash flow, so they have to make an adjustment.
they take out the non-cash item and remove it with the cash item. And that's everything with cash flows.